Hi, I'm Allie Philip Helen and welcome to episode 114 of Art This Week. This week we visit the Nasher and speak with Aaron Curry about his work in the exhibition statuette. Now for Art This Week. I'm Lauren Kennedy with Art This Week here at the Nasher Sculpture Center speaking with artist Aaron Curry, also part of the Statuesque Exhibition, so thank you for speaking with us today. Sure. Um, if you maybe want to start talking a little bit about the pieces that are in this show, um, the, your kind of abstract figurative forms and then this great color that you're working in. Um, these were the, actually the first, uh, I made one outdoor sculpture before these. these the, the, the three after that. So it's fairly new to me to make outdoor work. Um, I generally make things in plywood and cardboard. And um, it was interesting for me to, to really then translate that into a different material. And then once that happened, which these are aluminum, um, then I had to deal with surface. So in general, I like to kind of deal with this idea of uh, sculpture dealing somewhere in between two dimensions and three dimensions. like a, um, so I was trying to figure out how I can deal with that and with, I was thought, okay, I could put a pattern on them or just extremely uh, artificial color and have them just kind of blend into, like the forms blend into one another and it's kind of flatten out in that way. Um, so you have a background as a painter, I right? do, yeah. Um, I started off as a painter and worked my way into, I still paint. Uh, and I think of my sculptures somewhat like paintings. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Frank Stella's, and I think the way that he approaches paintings is like, really uh, exciting to me, um, among other people. But, uh, so, but I, I think of them in a similar sort of way, which I like. It's like this uh, kind of um, weird space. And I've talked to Thomas about this a lot, which he talked to earlier, is that when we talk a lot, we talk about painters, which is really interesting. And I said to him one day, why are we always talking about painters? And I think it's because we both love this idea of trying to pull something out into the real world and then how artificial that is and then what is that? And then that's exciting, you know? And I know some of your other work that I've seen, you said that this is your one of your first attempts really, um, or recent attempts rather, at, at outdoor sculpture, but some of your other pieces are end up being whole installations and you're covering the floor and the walls and laying things on top of it and hanging things on top of that and um, it's it kind of an over our all-encompassing experience it looks like mm -hmm. um, do you feel differently when you work in that way than seeing this kind of out here by itself and not not yeah. in that environment that you've made it's definitely different um, but it's also just as satisfying uh, you know, it's just a, a matter, it, at first I was actually a bit scared of, of dealing with, when these pieces were made, they were made for New York, which is this park in New York for statuesque, um, City Hall Park, and it's, you, I think immediately, usually you show in a gallery or a museum and it's like, you know, a white space, you know, that's made for art, mm -hmm. and uh, a park isn't, and I was kind of scared about that, and dealing with the buildings that were around it. Um, and I just sort of tried to attack the sculpture without thinking about that. I wanted to, I thought about like the scale in the sense that as a human being, how is someone going to walk up to it? How was I making it? How was I dealing with the scale of it? And then um, after that, I just kind of let it go. Uh, you know, it, I, I didn't have any control of the environment. And I think that's okay, you know. Um, I just have control of the piece itself. And right. then the piece sort of, then bounces off right. everything else around it. So. And you, you mentioned Thomas House ago, and, and we did speak with him. He's also part of the show. Um, and I know that you guys are buddies and, and coming from similar places in terms of references and life experiences and such. Um, and some of the things that you guys talked about today were science fiction and reading those books and watching those movies mm -hmm. as a kid and growing up. So if you want to speak about how that manifest in your work and maybe how it manifests in Thomas's work as well. Yeah. I, the difference. I mean as a kid growing up in Texas and I was just telling somebody this about like first getting off the plane and it was my immediate reaction is like god damn I forgot how hot it was here. Right. And the second reaction was like wow the sky is so amazing 
And I remember uh, growing up and looking at stars and thinking about space and what is this rock we're all living on. And, uh, and I got attracted to science fiction in that way, you know, and it's a very sort of existential idea. Um, and then through that, you know, the sort of imagery and what is the future, what will the future look like? I don't know, you know, it's just something that is, is fascinating, I think probably to everybody, mm -hmm. you know? It's just uh, that maybe I have more time to think about it. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, I, science fiction, I think it's just in, in a similar way, it's, you know, similar to you know, just regular fiction. It's like, what is, you know, what, is, what are we doing here? Um, who are we? Uh, why are we even alive? Why do we even, why can we even think, you know? These kind of things. So, uh, it's so, kind of like, these are the things that I thought about. And I met Thomas and uh, I was like, here's somebody that thinks similar to me, you know, than I do. Um, so, and is looking at the same stuff and is making the same, uh, associations, you know, this, the same sort of connections to history and... Something else you both have mentioned at different points is um, kind of being on the outside of, of what was going on when you were in school and kind of what is uh, has been in vogue, I guess, with regards to art trends and um, practices and stuff. So, because you guys both focus on the figure in some way, it's an abstract version of the figure, but there are these recognizable elements um, whereas people have been so conceptual for so long. So how does that play into what you make? I mean, are you thinking about that? Are you well, thinking yeah, about I mean, different? The thing is that I don't, I think that our work actually is conceptual. It's just the way that we are translating it is that it's a visual uh, language. And I mean, it, everyone does, but we're, we're letting the visual conversation happen, which is different, I think, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why this conversation happens. Anybody, you know, any sort of like artist puts something out there. There's formal issues, and then there's ideas behind it. And I think that for us, we've let the the formal discussion, you know, be the main sort of idea behind it, or you know, the the driving force of it. Because I mean, those ideas are just as complex. It's just put forward in a different way. You don't have to read the the panel on the wall because. The work is doing that work for you, and it allows you, as a, you know, this sort of freedom. But it's just as complex of thought. Sure. And it's just as you know, uh, uh, it's conceptual in that sense. I think it's just that the way that art has been sort of uh, put into this academic mode. It, I don't know. It's it's complex. It's like going to a record store, and you're like, there's a jazz section, there's a rock section, there's a, a pop section, but it's all music. You know, these are all just like terms that people throw around. But, I mean, we're just making things and, and, that's, and we're thinking about them in just a complex, as complex way as anybody else. Sure. Um, so, I mean, some of my favorite artists are these uh, conceptual artists, post-conceptual artists. But, um, I think that we champion um, letting, like, color and form, you know... Take more of a role. Yeah. So I think that's more interesting because it, you can lose yourself in that. Yeah. I think you can, you know, like I said earlier, it becomes about an experience. It becomes something that is, um, you know, that takes us away from uh, being like such a concrete idea of things. It, it, you lose yourself in it. It's like it goes back to this I, like Kant, you know, and this idea of the sublime and going into nature and just like losing yourself and, you know, being scared, and Thomas was talking about living and dying, you just, you know, it, it brings up all of this, these sorts of ideas. We want to thank Aaron for speaking with us. The exhibition is up through August 21st, 2011. Aaron is represented by Michael Warner Gallery, and more information on him can be found at their website, michaelwarner.com. More information on Statues can be found at nashersculpturecenter.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your Polaroid